Hi, um, my name is Matt McCluskey. Uh, my daughter is Lauren McCluskey, and she went missing tonight. And we reported it to the University of Utah Police. She's a student there. And I'm just make I just want to make sure that you guys know about that. Um, so we wouldn't really need to, other than her being listed, um, she would be listed as a missing person on the national database if you made a missing persons report. But, okay. Um, otherwise, I'm okay. So, else, else, well, so this is this is no no okay. So this is more than that. She was abducted while we were talking to her on the telephone. Okay. So so we heard her being assaulted and. We called the uh, University of Utah campus police, and I'm just calling you to let you know that this just happened like uh, an hour ago, and it's not just if she went missing. Was it, was it they were the you and Blaster? What I'm gathering so far is this dad was on the phone with his daughter, and they heard like some type of struggle. And so they called the campus police. Where she was at was at a university, right? So with police departments, you have jurisdictions. And so if it happened on the university or maybe the university property, that's who handles that location. This dad is now calling um, a different police department. And so even though it sounds like they don't want to help, it's just that it's not their jurisdiction. So we can't just go help people even though they call like a different city or they call um, from a different state. We can't just handle it because we're the first police department that they called or second one. We all, we have to refer them back to who already handled it or whose jurisdiction it is. So that's what this dispatcher is trying to let this man know. Although he doesn't know where his daughter's taken, possibly off campus, so that's probably what his thinking is, is I'm just gonna alert everybody in the area that something ha happened to his daughter and you can't blame him for that. Could you please say that again? Was it that they were in that silver Buick Lancer? Uh, I don't know anything about a silver Buick Lancer. Okay. Yeah, university let us know about it. We had our units. Um, we notified them as well. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Hi, I've been blackmailed um, for for money with threats of sending out me. Okay. Do you live or in Salt Lake or Sandy? Salt Lake City. Yes. Uh, well, it's it's building the. Oh, so what's your mailing address? So it it's um, the mailing address would be. So far, she seems pretty calm. The daughter upset from from just this call itself. If it's just a like extortion type call, there's not much to do immediately. Again, just from what I'm hearing right now, because there's no like bodily harm threats. It's just basically, if you don't give me this type of money for, you know, for whatever reason, then I'm gonna expose these pictures of you. And it's really upsetting, but you're kind of limited on what you can do in the moment. So for now, that that's just what I'm getting from here, but nothing nothing emergent that needs like a quick response. So you live like on campus? Up on campus. Okay. Let me go ahead and get you over. University of Police will probably take the case then, just one sec. I've, I've talked to them already, but okay. I just wanted to call you as well. Because um, usually, if you've already reported it, usually we just take it where you live. And then that agency does a case, because like, if they make threats, the most likely they'll come is at your house, in the place. So you normally don't have to make multiple okay. reports. Did they tell you to call us? Or did they take a case and give you a case number? No, they didn't. Okay, but you already did talk to him and tell him about it, or? Yeah, I was just concerned because I wasn't sure how long they were going to take to... Are you in line for an office? Are you? Rest. Oh, file a rest. But they didn't give you a case number at all? Oh, I think they did. Hold on. Okay. Um, Do you want to talk to them and see kind of more about what's going on with your case? Um, I'm sorry, what was that? you want to talk to them to see what's going on with your case? Wait a minute. Just a second. I think this is... Yes, there's a case number. Okay, let me get you up to them if they can see what's going on with that. Just one moment. If she's calling 911, I don't know where she's calling from, but her phone is hitting what's called a cell tower, and it goes to the nearest agency. So it's ringing over to, it sounds like Salt Lake Police Department. Um, 
so they're clarifying, okay, this one's going a little bit more in depth with her than the other one with the dad, but this one's saying, okay, they gave you a case number. Okay, that's good. You don't need to make another report with us because they already took a report. So let me get you back over to the agency that handles it and you can follow up with them because we're, depending on what kind of computer system that the, the police departments have, we're not able to read other police department's reports. So there would be no way for this dispatcher to be like, let me look up that report for you. We don't have access to that. So it's best to call the original handling uh, police report or police department, I'm sorry, to look up your own report and go from there and ask to speak to a detective or if you're not getting anywhere, then ask to speak to whoever's in charge and go from there. University 911, what is your emergency? Yes, city. She's got a case number pending. Um, she's received an additional blackmail threat. Nothing got from her so far, but she does have a case number. She's on the line. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just, uh, was, I'm worried because I, I, I've been working with the campus police. Um, at the U, uh-huh. and uh, last Saturday I reported, and then um, and I haven't gotten an update. Okay, but but someone contacted me today, mm-hmm. someone who was correct, and said that that they know everything about the police. Okay, so you already spoke to the campus police. Did some did this happen on the University of Utah campus? Um, yes, yes, and they haven't updated or done anything. So the, the case, it involves extortion, and, and those people uh, are still here me. Okay. So have, have you notified the campus police about this? Yes, I have. Okay. And what prompted you to call Salt Lake City, please? Well, I thought it was weird that... Um, that, it, that there are people who know about the entire case and the harassers seem to know about it more than me. And I'm concerned there might be an insider um, who's letting them know about the, ca- the case. Okay. <laughs> so with something... Because I haven't gotten updates. Yeah. And it's been a week. Okay. With something like that, you would want to contact the campus police back and ask to speak to your detective. If you're concerned, you can ask okay. to a detective supervisor. Since it's another agency's area, the Salt Lake Police wouldn't be involved. Oh, okay. All right. And then make sure you tell them what you told me, that this is get, this is getting through to you from the suspects in your case. Okay. So, so the, the detective you said is who I should contact? Right. Call the dispatch back and then ask to speak to your detective. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Thank you. All right. And then if anything happens or if you see them when you're, like, out and about in Salt Lake City proper, not audit on University of Utah property and for something like Mm -hmm. that we'd be the best people to call. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So where I work, I don't have any universities, but we do have bordering um, cities. So sometimes the bordering city will call us. So what happened was original 911 transferred to another 911 line. And so that's why that particular dispatcher, it, de- it depends on like how big their center is and how their center works, but sometimes they're unable to transfer them from the 911 line to a business line instead of just transfer from 911 line to 911 line, if that makes sense. So that's why she told her, okay, contact your detective. So the initial report was made and from how it sounds is it's just right now ex- some type of extortion to send out her pictures that she sent to this person that they obtained somehow. And so there's already, so once a report is obtained, it's by a particular officer. Once that officer's done with his report, it's given to a detective. So any follow-up regarding that same type of like crime that's all related, it would go to that detective. So that's who she would need to follow up with, with that. If it was like, hey, that person is harassing me and he's here at my house, then that would be something that they would immediately go out on. And so um, this, the, I guess it would be the third, well, second dispatcher that she talked to um, went a little bit more in depth to say, however, if you do see this individual outside of the campus, then call us. 
And that's because, yeah, we're going to be the ones handling it. So you don't need to go through all these loopholes. If it's an immediate reaction that's needed, you're outside the campus, call us. If it's on the campus, call them. So it's good to know just for future reference, if you're going to school or college, to know who handles your area. That way you don't get kind of, you know, transferred all around and all this time's being taken up. So part of us would be like, yeah, is that really happening kind of thing? Maybe he's just lying about it, saying, I know you went to the cops. Maybe this person heard it through friends of friends. Or it could be that he is a friend with some type of officer within the campus and getting information from them. It could be that perhaps after she made that report, that they looked for him or contacted him with whatever information they gave. And that's how he knows that she contacted the police. It could be like a number of things, but if, if, if it's strictly that somebody is getting back to him and keeping him updated and not her, then that is very concerning. I think that they did a good job. Um, they gave out the information that they could with the information that they were given. Um, I would say maybe the one that spoke to the father, and, and I don't know what he already knew or what he did after that phone call. But sometimes if you're kind of like, wow, yeah, this kind of sounds a little bit more than what we got originally, you there's nothing prohibiting us from calling that department back and be like, hey, I just spoke to the dad. And I know he reported this girl's missing, but did he tell you also that they were on the phone with her and they could hear a struggle over the phone? Because that obviously ups the ante with that type of call. Like, they should be sending somebody over to her house like right away or her dorm just to check and see if she's okay or not, at least as a welfare check um, sooner than later to see if, if she's okay or not. So there's nothing that would prohibit him from doing that, whether he did or not, I don't know, but that would be one additional step to take. Maybe it would be nice to hear the dad speaking to the campus police uh, dispatch to see what was said and what steps were taken. Um, but as far as the outside agency 911 calls that we heard and the dad's 911 call that we heard, it was all outside 911 calls. So they're not going to keep a record history of calls from her because there's no reports to be made or incidents to be sent out on. So even though all of our calls are recorded and kept for, you know, some odd years, we're not initially documenting it on our, on what's, what's called our CAD. It's not on our dispatch reports because we're not creating an incident for it. We're just simply giving her advice, giving the dad advice and transferring them, transferring him and her back to who should be handling the call. So we would have no call history as an outside agency to look it up, if that makes any sense. At the end of the day, the dispatchers that we just currently heard did the best that they could do with what information they were given and did the best they could to guide her and the dad in the right direction to handle what, you know, the call and in the emergency that they're going through at the time.